dear learners welcome today in this program we will learn about the mitigation measures of the landslides and its management well as we know the landslides causes heavy losses to the nation causes the loss of lives and damage to the properties so there is very important how we can mitigate with these landslides well there is a need to develop appropriate measures for mitigating the losses due to the landslides it should be cost effective and most important is that the effort should be made to use indigenous technologies well if we see the mitigation we can have in four types is altering that is to modify the hazards involve eliminating or reducing the frequency of its occurrences then averting that is redirecting the impact away from a vulnerable location by using a structural device or land treatment can shield people and development activities from harm and then adopting that means pre identified landslide hazards requires special building standards and construction practices in order to reduce vulnerability to the damages and then lastly this avoiding that means the keep people away from the hazardous areas or limit development in a risky area there are various preventive measures let's see one by one most important is the drainage measures suitable drain be made for the controlled flow of run of water which will reduce soil erosion drainage culverts must have the capacity to take sediment loads otherwise it will choke so we must take care of these small things well upstream river should be diverted from the landslide prone area and underground drainage be made for small channels and streamlets while making the drains there are different methods one is the contour drain contour drains may be made along different contours at reasonable interval on slopes to channelize surface water to prevent percolation in the ground likewise open diversion ditches to collect run of water on the uphill side may be made and likewise catch water drain connected to the near catch pit areas are some of the best practices well another important point is the perforated drain pipes may be implemented to control ground water which otherwise built up pore pressure in the sediments that facilitate landslide perforated drain pipes are used where ground water is significant which can be judged from the seepage condition in an area the pipes could be pvc or steel fabricated they are drilled at an angle of 15 to 20 degree nearly 3 meters below the ground surface and length of the pipes depends upon the site shallow surface drainage include the interceptor subsurface drainage horizontal gravity drain and interceptor trench drain similarly for subsurface drainage measures horizontal drains vertical drains and deep trench drains may be adopted as per site specific requirement now another important measure is the grading of slope as we know that the slope is a major cause of the landslide so we should look into it so slope modification techniques may be adopted to improve slope stability such as slope benches or terracing flattening of slopes removal of load at the slope head portion and enlarging this toe of a slope these not only reduce the slope but also trap the sliding material and regular monitoring of hill slope should be carried out for slope failures next important is the soil or debris removal work it is also known as geometry modification measures these are generally very effective in case of small to medium sized landslides soil or debris removal of this slide mass is generally undertaken from the crown portion downwards in this process benches are created at regular intervals depending on the properties of the material then construction of retaining walls and breast walls these restraining structures are constructed to prevent small size or secondary landslides that often occur along the toe of larger landslides it also brings greater stability to dangerous slopes now let us see the retaining wall and the breast wall what is different between retaining wall and the breast wall well breast wall 
are made on the hill side of the road and retaining walls are formed in the valley side. So, the stout embankments backpacked with boulders and gravels are constructed at the toe of the slope on the upper side of the road and heavy toe buttress of earth material are made for lateral support of the slope. Whereas, retaining walls are constructed at an angle of nearly 30 degree to sustain the overweight. Crib walls, this is another type of restraining structure. It is mainly used where the material is saturated. Crib wall is a supporting wall constructed by laying cribs at right angle to each other and these walls are preferred instead of conventional reinforced concrete retaining walls. Gavian walls are also provided as retaining structures where loose mass exists on the slope. Well, mulching and adding ground cover. This is an important aspect where mulch protects against rain and wind and reduces loss of soil moisture during extended dry periods. Then afforestation and reinforced vegetation. A thickly vegetative slope prevents erosion by the surface water because of natural anchorage provided by the tree roots thereby increasing shear strength of the slope material. Large size tree cuttings and removal of vegetable cover on hill slope should be stopped. Afforestation is most commonly an economical method applied in case of treated slope on large scale. This not only provides effective covering to the slopes to protect erosion of soil and loose material, but also the roots penetrate into the ground helps in improving shear strength of the subsurface material. Afforestation efforts required to adopt locally fast growing varieties. Horticulture should be given importance than agriculture especially in the hilly terrain. Then another important measure is the geofabric or choir jute matting. Geofabric commonly used in slope protection work. It is made of natural material like choir jute. The choir jute matting is laid over the slope and vegetation is allowed to grow over it. It is biodegradable. It initially protects the slope against surface erosion till vegetation takes over that role. Geogrid and geotextile. Geogrid and geotextile are geosynthetic material that helps to reinforce soil and similar material. Example of geogrid that permits vegetation to grow fast and hold the soil. Then grouting of loose and moistened soil. The strength of the moistened soil may be increased by injecting cement or hydrated lime slurry into the soil mass under pressure. Grout material such as lime, cement, sodium silicate, bitumen etc. is injected at high velocity through a nozzle into bedding planes, fractures, sand lenses etc. It is commonly known as short creed. Short creed, it reinforces the strength of the rock face. It includes aggregate, cement and water and may be complemented by fine material, chemical additives and reinforcing fibers. Hydro seeding is a process where seed, fertilizer, lime, moisture retention, polymer, tachyfiers and straw fiber mulch with water is mixed in correct proportion to form a slurry and it is spread on the ground to grow vegetation and it also controls erosion. Well, in case of rock masses, rock bolts and drap meshes are used. In this process, holes are drilled at suitable interval so as to pass through two or more chunks. Rock bolt is a long anchor bolt to stabilize rock blocks. It is mainly used in tunnels or rock cuts and these are used to prevent rock falls. Drap mesh is used to stop the falling blocks. It reinforces the strength of the rock masses. Well, human settlement on the hill slope, it is very important aspect. The geological suitability of the site must be evaluated before giving clearance to urban settlement on the hill slope. People normally build their houses just on the hill slope by making a hill slope into a table land without knowing the engineering aspect of that. An important aspect of the mitigation measure is also to create awareness among the people and they must be informed about the 
landslide prone area. So, display boards may be put at the areas which are prone to the landslide to avoid accidents. Well, public participation is also equally important as a part of the mitigation measure. We must avoid the areas with old landslides and the areas with the old lands are recognized by occurrence of debris cover flatter slopes, occurrence of an arcuate scar along the break in the slope, distinct difference in the vegetation pattern below slide affected areas and adjacent areas, presence of spring along a curved line, presence of irregular drainage pattern, humky nature of ground, a depression in longitudinal section of a slope. These area may be avoided else the old landslides are reactivated. As you can see in this photograph, the old landslide has been reactivated by the development activities. Well, other preventive measures are relocate or change the location of the facilities to avoid landslide prone areas. We must construct revetments, spurs, check dams to protect slope against river and stream erosion. Roadside drains and culverts, especially during the rainy season, may be regularly maintained to avoid percolation of water. Building construction on hill slope may be avoided as far as possible, but if it is important, it must be taken the engineering design into the consideration. Well, structural mitigation is also important. We must know the building codes and building bylaws and we must follow them. Building codes are for design and material standards, building permits, process, inspections and licenses. Whereas building bylaws are for announcing safety of new engineered construction to acceptable risk. We should not do things like this. As in this photograph you can see a five story building has been erected on a drain without considering its catchment that can bring enormous amount of water. It is thus clear that vulnerability to landslides combined with other natural hazards and socio-economic vulnerability of the people living particularly in the hairy region pose a great challenge to the government. The landslide hazards thus need attention for comprehensive plan for disaster preparedness and mitigation. Well, landslide inventory includes the building up and inventory of landslide that is the history of old, active and inactive landslides in an important area to be looked into which may form the base information for undertaking further detailed investigations and analysis for designing optimal and effective action plans. This will help in evolve integrated mitigation measures for landslides using remote sensing, GIS and GPS techniques. Landslide hazard generation maps may be prepared and make them available to the concerned governmental and non-governmental agencies for taking up necessary measures is the prerequisite in mitigating landslide hazards. Landslide risk assessment concerns hazards and losses in terms of life and properties. It would help in generating reliable database for better planning and formulating various alternative plans to minimize threat to human life and properties. Well, monitoring and analysis of the land size is an important aspect. The magnitude of destruction depends on the location of the landslide. So, recognition of precise causes of landslide is very important. Professor Valdia in 2002 has suggested formulation of a public policy for hazards management and strengthening of machinery for coping with hazards risk through public cooperation which are imperative of the environmental security and planning for development. Dear learner, we discuss about the mitigation measures in this program. As we have seen there are various mitigation measures to check the landslides. But all depends upon the site specific conditions of the landslides. And as I mentioned about the management of these landslides, 
everybody has their role to play and the people's participation is very important the local community is rather very important for this thank you